Hello, today we'll be reading chapter 13 of Bubble. 11 years, three months, and one day. The, screen, the screens hang like black pictures on the walls. They've been blank for several days, and Amir hasn't been back to switch them on. I walk over to the window. It rained yesterday, but today it must be hot because all the men digging the road have taken off their shirts. Across the road, the people in the glass building are sitting at their desks, waving pieces of paper in front of their faces like fans. I lean forward to see if I can see Amir walking up the pavement. My head bumps against the glass. I can't see him anywhere. All I can see are people crossing in the road to the walk in the shade. I glance at the monitors. Heart rate 86. Body temp 37.5 degrees Celsius. Room temp 18 degrees Celsius. Humidity 7%. Air purity 98.5%. It's like everyone is melting except for me. I go over to my bed and turn my lamp, my laptop. Sarah smiles at me. It's another video, so she must still be on vacation. Hi, Drew. Today we are going to... Hi, hi, do. Today we are going to learn Archimedes' principle. She points at a picture of a watering can. I shake my head. I'm too tired to learn anything today. I go to the window. A white van pulls up outside the glass building. Two men get out, open the doors, and carry fans and portable air conditioners inside. I type a message to Henry. Hey, Henry. Hey, Joe. What are you doing? Macbeth. It's boring. You? Archimedes' principle. If I get in a full bath and collect the water, it'll weigh the same as me. Have you got a bath? No. Macbeth killed four people. Wish he'd kill Shakespeare, too. Ha. Huh. Got to go. Really? I'm bored. I'm sorry. Breakfast and more NASA stuff. I'll catch you later. Okay. I want to ask Henry more about his trip about his Skype icon has gone off. I look back at the screens. I wish Amir would hurry up. The people in the glass building plug their air conditioners and fans. Pieces of paper blow off the table onto the floor. The workmen stop digging up the road, put their drills down, and drink bottles of water in the shade. I go back to the bed and turn on the TV. People are dying in West Africa from a new disease. The reporter says three and a half thousand have died already in Sierra Leone, and he points to a red dot on the map. The disease is spreading across Mali, Nigeria, and into Chad. A doctor has flown back to America. She didn't know she had the disease, but she had taken it to Houston with her. She's in quarantine, and the police have a closed off all of the hospital. I turn off the TV and lay back down on my bed. It's hot outside and there's a new disease that's going to spread all over the world. I look around the room. I feel trapped in it today. Sometimes I wish it were bigger. Sometimes I wish I could get up and push the walls out. They could slide back into the room because half, to make it half the size of a tennis court. But I wouldn't stop. I'd keep pushing until the room grew as big as the football pitch. Then I would put a goal up net and paint a penalty spot, kick the ball, score a goal, and run around with the hands above my head. I'd run toward the crowd and they'd shout my name, Joe Grant, Joe Grant, and I'd pump my fist, take off my shirt with number 10 on the back and throw it at them. And they'd cheer louder and I'd jump into them. They'd carry me above their heads, pass me from one, one person to the next, and I'd feel their hands pressed against my back and I wouldn't care about that because I'd be big and full of muscle and all my bruises would be gone. I wish my real world was like as big as the one in my head, but the walls are where they've always been. They haven't moved. Only the posters have. Theo Walcott is still smiling at me. I wrote him a letter once asking if I could have his autograph and perhaps if he could send me a ball. He sent me a picture that hangs on the wall. Sometimes I wish he had come and see me, and I think that I could hear his football studs on the floor in the transition zone. I think I hear him talking, and there's another person replies, and he speaks Spanish. For a moment, he's brought Cezek Fabregas with him. But it can't be, because he plays for Chelsea now. But he might have come back, because every time I see them on TV, Theo Walcott smiles at Sezek, and I think that they might be good friends. I look at the screens. If they were working, I could watch every football match in the Premier League at the same time. I take a deep breath and blow out my cheeks. More than three days they've been blank, but it feels like three weeks. I lie back, stare at the ceiling, and wish it was the sky. It's late in the afternoon when I hear voices in the transition zone. I don't recognize one of them, but the other is Amir's. I'm okay, he says. False alarm. But you know the rules. Yes, says Amir. I took the three days and next run to be sure. Okay. I hear the sound of running water and the spray. The doors slide open. Amir walks in. Amir, where have you been? Amir smiles. It's okay. Don't worry. I thought I had a sore throat, but I remembered I swallowed a chicken bone. Was it serious? Yes, he says. It got stuck for a while, but I'm okay now. He grins. I know him better now, but I still can't tell if he's joking or not. He walks over to the window and looks out, first across the building and then to the side of the window, then down the street. He whispers, yes, yes, yes. What is it, I ask. Amir rubs his hands together quickly like they're cold. It's all good, he says. The planes still come. The satellite dish is on the wall. The landing strip is halfway up the road. It's only been a few days, but I had begun to forget what it was like to have Amir around. 
I love Greg, but Amir is the best at making me forget where I am. He turns away from the window. You not been well? No. But you better now? I think so. Just a bit bored. It would have been better if they're working. I nod at the screens. Oh, the TVs. 12 by 1920 by 1080. HDMI, DVI, full HD. My brother gets them from work. They're upgrading to Hitachi. Do you like them? Yes, I like them, but Amir, what? They the wrong color? We could get some spray paint and them silver. No, it's not that. What then? I hold my, my hands. Amir, why did you get so many? Oh, he puts his hands on his head like he's only just noticed. That's how many he get. I know you had room. You saw me measure the wall. Have you switched them on yet? No, I couldn't find the remote. Oh, sorry. I take it home. He taps his pocket. Here. He hands me the remote. It's got more buttons on it than I've ever seen. Amir leans over and points. You press the red button first, then the green. I press the red button. I hear the click of the speakers and the sound of static. Three screens flicker on. There's a picture of cars and trucks going down the street, another a dark, empty alley, and another alley with a black stairwell full of boxes and bins. I look at Amir. I thought you were getting Sky. Press the button again. I do, and as he says, four more screens flicker on. There's a, a delivery truck parked on the curb, a security guard standing by the door, a man walking with a briefcase, and a lady typing on a laptop behind a glass screen. I don't know what I'm watching, but it isn't Sky. Amir, what are you doing? You're going to rob a bank? Ha, huh, no, come here. I follow him to the window. He looks down onto the, the street, the back of the screens. The delivery van stops in the road. The delivery van stops in the screen. I scratch my head. Amir, what have you done? Me and Rashid, we get you hospital CZTV. I shake my head. I didn't want CZTV. I only wanted Sky. I walk up along the screens and look at them one by one. The security guard throws a cigarette on the ground and walks back to the corner. He disappears from one screen and then appears on the other. He nods at people who walk past him to the hospital doors. I follow them inside. They form a line in front of the lady typing behind the screen. On the next screen, the bus has stopped and the people are getting off. Some wear coats, some carry backpacks, some carry plastic bags. I shake my head. You know, like? I don't know what to say to him. He's gone through all this trouble, but I didn't want this. All he wanted was to watch football and films. I didn't want to see traffic and people walking without sound. I can do that every day from when I see when I look at the windows. Amir stands in front of me. I thought I'd show you real people, not film stars. But real people don't do anything interesting. They do. They walk. They talk. Not everyone run around shouting and firing guns. He takes remote from me. Look, he says. There's 32 cameras, two in reception, 16 in the quarters, four and a half on the roof, and he stops t talking and turns his head like a dog. What's wrong, I ask? It's okay. I think I hear someone coming. If they do, just press this button or we get in trouble. He presses the red button. The TV changes to color. A woman is reading the news in a studio in Moscow or a porter and standing in front of in front of the Empire State Building in New York, ten people are playing ice hockey that live in Ontario, and women playing volleyball on a beach in Brazil. Wow, I put my hand on my head. Haha, you think I not get you Sky too? I was worried. Of course we got Sky. I get the other satellites too. Now I watch TV all day, all night. Rashid gets extra 847 channels, 36 countries. Do you think we'll see Henry when he goes to the mall? He'll be on Philly News. Um, I not know. Sounds like it might be cable. I asked Rashid. Amir presses another button. Hey, we got MasterChef in it Italian. I shake my head. What? No MasterChef? No, it's not that. It's just, Amir, I can't believe what you've done. It great, he says. Which one we watch? This one? He points to the first screen on the second row. A shark swims across the ocean. Amir presses another button. All the screens go blank. Then bits of the shark appear on all the screens. In the head of the top left, it's tail on the bottom right, and they swim towards a man in a cage with a harpoon. Oops, says Amir. Maybe watch something not so scary. I turn and walk back to my bed. Amir gives me the remote and sits on the chair bes beside me. I press another button and we watch a program about how skyscrapers are built to survive earthquakes in San Francisco. Amir's eyes are shining so brightly that the skyscrapers reflect in his eyes. We both smile. Greg was right. He was building me a cinema. I might not watch hospital CZTV very much, but I didn't think Amir would be so good at this. Amir has to go and look at others, so he leaves me to watch TV on my own all afternoon. I watch a woman whitewater rafting down a river and a man snowboarding down a mountain, and then I try out some of my DVDs. The Amazing Spider-Man, Avengers, Assem Avengers Assemble, Batman Returns. I love them on normal TV. I love them even more on my massive screens. I take a picture of my phone and send it to Henry. Thor never looked so big. I wait for a few minutes, but Henry doesn't reply. I find the screen, the scene where Thor smashes a truck into a bur burning building. I wish Henry could see this. We could sit here all afternoon and flick through the sports and the movie channels and MTV. We could connect on my Xbox, too. I check my messages again. Maybe he's preparing for another walk. 
What if the walk in the mall goes well? They promised to let him come over here, but he'll get out all the time. He won't have time to message me or play Tekken. He'll be busy like everyone else. Even Beth is busy now, too. I look at my screens. I love what Amir has done, but it's not so much fun watching them on my own. There's no one to point out things to, or laugh with, or cheer with when someone scores a goal. But I shouldn't be so grumpy. I should be grateful. It must be the, the drugs. Maybe it's because I'm tired. I pick up the remote and turn off the screens. Amir turns them back on when he brings me the tea. He asks me if I'm fed up with them already. I tell him I love them, but I miss you about Henry and that he seems busy. But he won't be all the time anyway, he says. Maybe you get busy too. In here? No, but if the suits work for him, maybe you can wear one too. I don't think so. It's too expensive and Henry's way bigger than me. They wouldn't do it and the European Space Agency still hasn't replied. We don't need them. I could make you one. We, can go to, we can't go to Philadelphia, but there's a shopping center near Enfield. Amir, I'm serious. They've got scientists. I'm serious, too. I got my brother. He go to university. Is he a scientist? No, but he got a degree in geography. But we great team. I designed the suit. He tells how to get there. Wow. 90 minutes. What? Amir nods at the screen. 90 minutes. The sperm whale can hold its breath for 90 minutes. I held mine for four when I was stuck in an elevator last week. I lay back on my bed. The TVs have been on for too long. My head is aching and I feel really tired, and Amir is talking about things that can't happen. I think we should turn them off now, I say. Amir looks at me. Turn the TVs off? We've only got we've only just got them. You need to watch them. Watch everyone in the hospital, the doctors, the nurses, and security guards. The security guard? Jim, he funny. He come and go when everyone go. Haven't you seen him yet? No. You should. Watch him tonight. He's funnier than Rick and Gerva Ricky Gervais. Who? No matter, just watch. But I need to turn them off sometime. Won't they get warm and make the room warmer? Amir shakes his head. No, thermostat will adjust and keep the room temperature constant. Anyway, we can't turn them off. There's another program I want you to watch at 8. It's about orangutans. Why do I want to watch that? Don't you like orangutans? Yes, I suppose so. But I might fall asleep before it starts. I set the alarm on your laptop. Can't I watch it on, on reruns? I get you 100 in channels and you want reruns? Sorry. It's okay. i only joking. He points the remote. The screens go blank, and then he gets up and walks toward the door. See you later. Okay, I smile and close my eyes. My head begins to thud. I'm supposed to be taking it easy. Amir should know I'm not supposed to get this tired. He talks so much he's made me confused. He can't build me a suit. It costs millions. He can't really mean it, and even if he did, how would he get me out without being spotted? I love Amir, and I love my TVs, but I can't help thinking he's bought them for himself and not me. The sun is shining, and so are the car roofs. I'm back out of our car. Beth is next to me playing her Nintendo DS. Mom and Dad are in the front seats, talking and listening to music. Can I put my window down? It's hotter outside, but can I put it down? Yes, okay. I wind the window and look down. A, a little girl in the car next to me is asleep with her head against the glass. A man gets out of the car behind. It's an accident, he shouts. Just heard on the radio, 27 car pile up. Yeah, heard it too, shouts another man. He looks up at the sky. I hear a thud of rotor blades. I lean out the window and three helicopters fly over my head. Dad is smiling at me, side view mirror, and I can reach out and touch his arm. How you doing, Spidey, Dad says. I'm okay, but the man just said there's a bad accident ahead. Twenty-seven cars. I know. He smiles again, then rests his head on, on his hands. Beth is laid on the flat on the seat. Her hair is hanging down over her face, and her Nintendo DS is smashed on the floor. Hey, Beth. It's an accident. Twenty-seven cars, and you missed the helicopters. I lean over. My seatbelt pulls me back. I move it down my belly and reach out further. Beth, the helicopters, there were three of them. Beth's hand fall off the seat. I pull off. I pull her hair back from her face. There's a cut across her cheek. A line of blood trickles from her nose. Mom, Dad, there's something wrong with Beth. I tap Mom on the shoulder. Her head falls forward against her chest. Dad turns around. Get out, Joe, the gasoline is coming in. I look down. The gasoline is seeping under the door and covered my feet. The smell burns my nose and makes me feel sick. Joe, now... But I pull out my seatbelt and reach for the button. Dad, I'm stuck. Press the button, Joe, the red one. I am, Dad, I am. I look up through the windshield. Four firemen run toward me. Hoses and axes in their hands. Behind them, I see ambulances and police cars and blue flashing lights. I press the button. It clicks, but my belt doesn't release. Dad reaches back, pushes my hand against the way. My belt goes slack. Now, Joe, go. I look around the car, but what about Beth? Dad, what about Mom? He shakes his head. A fireman reaches in through the window. He grabs my hand, wraps his arm around my chest. Come on, son, let's go. He drags me out. What about my mom and dad and my sister? He looks in the car, then back at me. Son, there's no one else here. I look back at the car. Mom and dad and Beth have gone. All the traffic is gone. It's just white lines and asphalt for miles and miles. I look back at the fireman. He's gone, too. 
So I think that we just ended that chapter with a scary dream of Joe's. I think sometimes when you're feeling a little bit anxious, you might have a bad dream. But as long as you know that it's just a dream, it's okay. So we'll read chapter 14 tomorrow.